This is a story of survival. I was 14. I was a schoolgirl by day and a sex slave at night. A girl forced to spend her childhood in a satanic sex cult in Wales, sexually abused by its leader and her own mother, and forced to sleep with 1,800 men. By telling Annabelle there's no such thing as family, actually it's telling her there is no one out there to protect you. It's possible to take a child and make them believe the most outrageous things are normal. And it's a story of courage, a girl who broke ranks to expose the deviant world which imprisoned her. The police investigation was difficult. Uh, they were trying to penetrate a very uh, tightly knit group. Why was my mum calling me a liar when she knew that was what happened? I wasn't dreaming this. The identity of the girl at the centre of this story is protected by court order. Her name and the names of other victims and her family have been changed. Her part is played by an actress. We'll call her Annabelle Forrest, the pseudonym she used in a book telling her story. Katie White's was her ghostwriter. It was difficult for Annabelle to tell her story, just to me, alone in a room. Um, but I think she wanted to, and there were things that she'd never told anybody before. Uh, it's not something she talks about. So for her, I think the process was quite cathartic, quite healing. Annabelle's story starts in London's East End, where she lived with her mother and younger half-sister. My parents split up when I was two, and the man in the house was my mum's partner, Alan. He was the dad of my half-sister, Olivia. I did know my own dad. He was affectionate with me and I liked him. But it was Alan that dropped me off and picked me up from school. <laughs> Have you had a good day? Yeah, I've had a good day. Yeah. Fantastic. Come on. He was more of a parent than my mum, Jackie. I don't remember ever having a cuddle from my mum or her reading me a story at night. I don't remember much about her at all. Like many others in the block of flats that was home, Annabelle's mum, Jackie, was on benefits, though she'd worked for a time as a dental nurse. One thing I do remember about my mum was she had this shark tattooed on her shoulder. And that's what she was like, gliding through my childhood. It wasn't that I was short on love. I had Alan and my dad and my mum's sisters and my grandparents, and they were all lovely. She did have an extended family. However, the one person that really she craved love, attention and affection from was actually her mother, Jackie. And this was singularly missing. With children who are deprived of that, there is a vulnerability that makes them very susceptible to being groomed in the presence of any affection or attention that they might be given. Whilst Annabelle was still small, a new figure entered Jackie's life. Annabelle wouldn't have been able to realise it, but her mother, Jackie, was getting closer and closer uh, involved with this, this man, Colin Batley. A man who, it would later emerge, had been a sexual abuser from the age of 12. Colin, from Shoreditch, was obsessed with the occult. He'd been living off prostitution, gambling and black marketeering. Now, he was drawing together women like Jackie to found a cult based on the writings of the 19th century Satanist, Alistair Crowley. He seemed to believe what was written by him about the occult, about Satanism, about black magic. Sex as well, but almost as a tool of power, if you like. For Colin, this idea of, of the cult was an incredibly important thing because this was the tool that he was able to use to draw people in. Several of the women, like Jackie, had children. There was a very clear paedophilic strategy of grooming in choosing victims very carefully. How did a perfectly normal and strong woman become so easily led into Colin's world? I think that Colin had a certain aura to make people believe that there was more to it, that there, he really did have access to a higher realm, a secret to, um, you know, eternal life. By 1997, his church had 17 members. 
Colin persuaded several to move with him to Kidwelly in South Wales, bringing their children. In that area, there's something like 900 square miles of basically nothing. And people can vanish if they choose to do so. There are all sorts of alternative lifestyles on the way down there. Tucked away, no one can see them, no one knows what's happening. I hated it there. The house where we was living was rotten. It's like an old man's house. It's freezing. Hello? I've told you I can't talk to you. Is that my dad? Nope. Nobody came to see us, so I miss my aunts and my grandparents. Alan came with us, but it was obvious Mum didn't want him then. Oi, Annabelle, come on. Um, come on, we're going to be late. Well, off you go. She made him get work away, and gradually he stopped coming back. Many sexual abusers isolate their victims from an extended family community network. In doing that, their power is increased because they become all-powerful. It was several weeks before Annabelle, aged seven, first met Colin. Wake up. Wake up. Oh. Downstairs now. It was the middle of the night. You know, your family's come here to be part of something very special. I was scared. The way you looked. This is where your life in the church begins. This is going to be a difficult path for you, your mum and your sister. I didn't know what he was going on about. I was seven. I'd just woken up. Only you can find your way to the palace to avoid the eternal pain of the abyss. At some point, he made a gesture towards Jackie. The evening in which um, Annabelle meets Colin Blackley for the first time, he demonstrates the power and the control he has over her mother. This will have been engraved on Annabelle's mind, the power he had over all the church members, including her. Come forth, Annabelle. You're the chosen one. Come on, come forth. He lunged forward and hooked an arm behind my knees and pulled me forward so I could see what was happening. You can go to bed now. Colin Batley had just become the dominant figure in Annabelle's life. She was about to find out what it meant to be female and a child in his world. Mum wasn't working, but she seemed to have no time for anything apart from Colin. I was lonely. Miserable. Annabelle started at a local primary school, but soon decided she'd had enough of her new life. Where are you going? To live with my dad. OK. I'll arrange it. I was surprised by her reaction. I'd expected a fight. Why do you want to go to your dad's? Just to. Fine. It's your choice. I'll take you there right this minute, if you like. But you do know, he won't look after you like your mum. He won't feed you, wash your clothes. But if that's what you want, we'll go right now. I did want to go, but there was something in the way Colin spoke that made me doubt my feelings. I'll stay here. Good girl. That's your choice, and a good choice. He always made it seem like it was your decision, and it wasn't. After a year in Wales, Annabelle, her sister and mother, moved to a cul-de-sac in Kidwelly, right next door to Colin and close to other cult members. At first, everything seemed normal. Colin had a family of his own, including a daughter called Hope, who immediately became my friend. His wife, Elaine, was nice too. But, of course, everything wasn't normal because our lives now were run by the church. I am alone. There is no God where I am. Members of Colin's cult gathered every Sunday. Help me, O warrior lord of Thebes. 
There were readings from Satanist Alistair Crowley's Book of the Law, with its references to Egyptology. Crowley claimed to have uh, written the book after the words were dictated to him by a, a god. The chosen priest is the prince priest, the beast, and in his woman, called the scarlet woman, is all power given. An essential part of the book is that a man must do what he wants to do, irrespective of any laws. Drawing on the writings of, of Alistair Crowley, Colin was able to make people question the boundaries around behaviour within the family and, and sexual propriety. And having those, those barriers taken down and, and stripped away, he took away all semblance of what we would consider to be normality. Let all chaste women be despised. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I think the Egyptian iconography was, was quite powerful because of the, the nature of the symbols that were used. They were quite frightening, especially for young children to see. And that was part of the culture of fear that he was able to, to build up for the people around him. Oh, I'm going upstairs to do my meds. Watch your sister and don't come in. Every day, Mum went upstairs for an hour to do her meditation. It was only by accident I found out what that actually meant. That's when I saw her tattoos. All female members of the sect had a, a tattoo known as the Eye of Horus, which is known as the all-seeing eye. It's supposed to be a protective mechanism. It means that it can see everything and Batley can see them, and in so doing, he can control them and protect them. The church had loads of rules. You couldn't turn your back on the Egyptian gods or play with non-church kids or go to the park or the shops. No internet, no news, no cinema or restaurant, no alcohol for the adults. And if anyone asked, we was to say we was Mormons. Colin would often refer to the rules of the church, and whenever he was challenged on these, he would then refer to something known as church secrecy. That's within church secrecy. I can't expand on, on those things. Batley was able to uh, maintain that his cult was part of a far larger church that even had head headquarters in France, that there were some very powerful people involved who could cause harm if they wished and that um, it would be better for them if they did what he said. Colin was the prince priest. Are you looking into my eyes? I warned you about staring into my eyes. You'll be looking into the abyss. Sometimes I'd forget his rules. He could be terrifying. Can you see the devil? He can see you. My mum had to give him all our benefits and he gave her just £50 a fortnight for food. If anyone answered him back, he'd get angry. <laughs> I never actually saw him hit anyone, but you could never tell. The cult's activities all took place behind closed doors. It seemed that in the whole time that Annabelle was growing up, there was only perhaps one occasion where somebody noticed that anything was amiss in her life, and that was a teacher who bought her food sometimes. But the rest of the time, perhaps because there was a lot of poverty in the area, um, it seemed that her problems went unnoticed. When I was 11, the tests started. I didn't know they were tests at first. It was a hot day. The heat makes me feel ill. I told you I'd have you. He didn't say not to tell anyone. He didn't have to. Who could I talk to? I couldn't talk to my mum. I couldn't talk to Elaine. It was her husband. Colin would have found out. He spoke to the gods and they told him everything. From that moment, I changed as a person. I felt very alone. It happened again the next night. Do you know the gods are pleased with you? 
One of the things that Annabelle would have craved with the lack of affection and attention from mother was to feel special. We have to remember she, her father was not present in her life. But you have to pass tests to go higher in the church and prove yourself fully to them. Yes. Is this your will, that you should do the tests? Yes. He very cleverly didn't say you must do this. He gave this to her in a semblance of choice. So for her, at that time, it wasn't an act of abuse, it was an act of choice in order to become a fully-fledged member of the church. After that, it was like that every night. My mum must have known, but she did nothing. In fact, when Annabelle was 14, Colin revealed her mother would play an active role in Annabelle's progress through the church. It's time for you to learn the ways of the Scarlet Woman the wife of the prince priest. Then he said, there's no such thing as family. I was about to discover what he meant. Colin's coming around tonight after school. He wants to see both of us together. Got it? Jackie came under Batley's spell completely, even to the point of viewing her own daughter as somebody who Colin Batley could abuse whenever he wanted to, as if her own daughter was there, not for her, but for Colin Batley. He's asking them to break one of the last and few taboos, which is sexual activity between mothers and daughters and mothers and their children. And in breaking that, that taboo is actually a way of breaking the person's will. Sex sessions were now happening every other night, but it was about to get worse. You're too uptight. Tonight, before Colin comes round, he wants us to have sex together. I knew I had no choice. It was horrible. It took me to a place inside myself I didn't even know existed. When Colin came in, he said, did I enjoy it? I was too scared to say no. Well, Jackie would know that this is unacceptable behaviour, this is criminal behaviour, it's highly abusive, but she would justify it to herself in, in terms of, of her serving Colin's needs. Soon, Colin told her she also had to sleep with a 19-year-old boy from the church called Thomas, who was five years older than Annabelle. What this would mean is, should Annabelle fall pregnant, which was always a risk because he was not using protection, it could always be explained away as being Thomas's child. I didn't want to, but Colin made me. He got a lot of pleasure from making me do things I didn't want to. So now, I was having sex with Colin, Mum and Colin, and Thomas. I was a schoolgirl by day and a sex slave at night. As the years went by, Batley had access to more and more young people whom he abused. He used the young people as ways of gaining access to other young people until there was a, another subgroup within the cult. At least three young girls and one young boy. He started sending Elaine and Oak to Tenby for the weekend so he could do what he wanted without Elaine finding out. And whilst I was away, we all had to wear teeny skirts and make up like Cleopatra. He said it was the way of the Scarlet Woman. As the years passed, Annabelle became increasingly worn down. She was left looking after the baby because Jackie disappeared at weekends, doing unexplained work for the church, after which Jackie was too exhausted to cope. Aged 17, Annabelle was forced to have sex with a church member her own age with learning difficulties. Many sexual abusers will try to entice the child to engage in activities of which they are ashamed. In having to perform that act under his direction, in her mind, might have made her feel that she was no better than what was being done to her. By 2007, Annabelle Forrest had spent a decade in the secretive pseudo-religious sex cult run by Colin Batley in South Wales. He'd been abusing her since she was 11. She was now 17. I'd been feeling really unwell for a few weeks and my periods went all funny. And one day someone said I could be pregnant. I said, no way. I mean, Colin said I couldn't get pregnant, that I was protected by the gods. It was the first time I'd cried in years. I didn't want a baby. 
I mean, how could I bring up a baby in this life? Her fear would have been that in bringing this child into the world, especially if it was a daughter, is that she would become a future victim for Colin Batley. But the unborn baby was about to expose for the first time a chink in Colin Batley's armour. Colin? Yeah. I'm having a baby. Yeah, we already knew that. But in that moment, when he reacted, I knew it was a surprise. In that split second, I started to doubt him. He couldn't be all-powerful because he didn't know. You want to keep your legs crossed a bit? We think you should get rid of it. I want to get rid of it as well. I absolutely didn't want a child. And I knew it was his. It wasn't Thomas's. I always used a condom with Thomas. But that night, Colin unexpectedly changed his mind. Suddenly, he was angry. He said, I'd have to have the baby. If I got rid of it, I'd be murdering a child of the gods. A strategic decision to keep the child. It would reduce the chances of her wanting to escape and the risk of disclosure or her going to the police. Look, this is your path. If you want to get rid of it, we'll sort it tomorrow. But it's totally against the gods' wishes. Colin forced Annabelle to tell Thomas she was pregnant and that the baby was his. I didn't think that would happen. Neither did I. I'm happy, you know. Are you? Yeah. It was all such awful lies. Colin knew the baby was his. From then on, I was like a zombie. I felt nothing for the child I was carrying. In February 2008, baby Emily was born. From the second she arrived, I completely changed. I forgot where I was. It was just her and me. It was magical. When Annabelle described Emily's birth and seeing her for the first time, she suddenly smiled and Annabelle laughed. And it was the first time I had ever heard her laugh. I felt... I just felt Emily took away the stone from my heart. You have no idea what I've been through for you. Having Emily strengthened Annabelle's resentment against Colin. Give her to me. I said, give her to me. He said it was time I started working for the church. This is when I got an inkling of what my mum and the other women had been doing, disappearing every weekend. Are you ready to be set on the path to the palace? Yes. Then there's three things you can do. You can work in porn, run a sex shop, or become the whore of Babylon, which I believe is your destiny to become a scarlet woman. Is this your choice? Try this one. But I still didn't properly understand what was involved, even when my mum took me shopping for lingerie. Today's the day, my little whore Babylon. You're off to Bristol. I never even heard of Bristol, but I knew this was about whatever my work was to be for the church. Who look after Emily? Me, of course. It's only a couple of days. Colin had no sense of others' needs. He only cared about himself. I knew he wouldn't have a clue how to make a bottle or change Emily. Annabelle was taken to a building called the Paradise Lounge. A cult member called Shelley let her in. In there. Annabelle discovered her mum, Jackie, was already there. OK, so your name's Camilla. You introduce yourself as Camilla. If a bloke comes in and you get picked, it's 60 quid for half an hour. I was totally shocked. Not for one second had I imagined I'd be having sex with strangers for money. Colin had really excelled himself, I think, when he came up with this wheeze to get all the girls to go and prostitute themselves to get money 
for him and he made them believe that that was part of their spiritual quest. Colin Backley already possessed Jackie's body and soul. He already possessed Annabelle's body and soul. And proof of that was to enslave them into post prostitution. So they now became merely a commodity. The trips to Bristol became routine. Every Friday for three nights, on duty 24 hours a day. It was divide and rule. So he set all the girls up in competition with each other. And so he, he said, oh, you're all in competition to become the Scarlet Woman, the Chosen One. And therefore, they weren't really encouraged to talk amongst themselves. There was a lot of backstabbing, there was a lot of jealousy, there was a lot of hatred among them because that made Colin even more powerful. They fought for his affections just as he wanted them to. He took all Annabelle's earnings, two to three thousand pounds each weekend. He said the money was going to the church HQ in France, but he was buying new TVs, furniture, cars, holidays. I just didn't believe him. I'd look at his stuff and think, I've bought that by having sex with strangers. Really, it's about humiliation. He wanted to humiliate her in that and show her how powerful he was. Annabelle's target was 1,854 men. She soon exceeded 1,800. Her mother had actually gone past that figure and had actually not benefited from it at all. That year has affected me more than anything else. Being made to do that, sleep with all their men, leave my daughter, her face, every time I left her. She got angrier and angrier as she was taken further away from her own daughter. She wasn't able to see her take her first steps or hear her first words, and she was being denied the chance to be a mother. Annabelle began keeping money back, building an escape fund. At first, it was just 30 or 40 pounds from an extra I didn't tell Colin about. I mean, it wasn't really stealing, I'd earned it. But I was scared Colin would know. But he didn't. In May 2009, Annabelle decided to escape. But to do so, she needed help. We can do it. We can get away from the church. Be together as a family. That's exactly what I want. Thomas knew nothing of her brothel work, but he too had been forced to hand his wages to Colin. Find Alan, my mum's old boyfriend. Yeah, I remember. Go to the library. They've got the internet. I'll sort it. Alan was easy to trace on Facebook. Immediately, he agreed to help. Thomas was going to join us later. Colin lived next door and I was petrified he was going to wake and catch me. What? Hello, babe, you all right? What's going on? Oh, can you we right? just go? Right. No, it's fine, it's fine. Oh, come on. OK, babe, come on, you just get in, yeah? Annabelle had fled physically, but the fear of Colin Batley would not be so easy to escape. New dangers and new darkness lay ahead. <laughs> Good morning, cup of tea. It was Annabelle and Emily's first day of freedom. I didn't know what he meant. Did he want me to go and make him a tea? Then I realised he was offering to make me one. The first time ever. They'd escaped from Colin Batley's sex cult in Kidwelly and were staying with their rescuer, Alan, in Carmarthen. Thomas, who'd lived with Annabelle in Kidwelly, joined them. He said Colin made out like he didn't care where I'd gone. Mum didn't say anything at all. There were problems from the start with Thomas. I couldn't face having sex anymore, and he became really controlling, started acting funny. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? I don't believe this. Just go away and stop following me. It's creepy. 
I thought he might be back in touch with Colin. He kept saying we should go back for a visit. I kicked him out. He went straight back to Kidwelly. Her aunt Kate still lived in London and Annabelle went to stay with her. Finally, nearly a year after her escape from the cult, Annabelle felt ready to open up about her life. Colin was abusing you when you were 11. Abusing me? I'd never thought about it like this. Colin had always asked me if I wanted to do the test, so I assumed it was my choice. You were a child. A child can't choose to have sex. No, it was my choice. It was rape. You've got to go to the police. You can't let him get away with it. That was when I went off the rails. Knowing Emily was a product of rape. I couldn't cope. Annabelle started going out by herself. What? I'd spent so long on a leash, I finally decided to do what the hell I liked. Yeah, that sounds good. I met a small-time drug dealer. Already over the limit. Every weekend, we'd meet up for marathon sex and drug sessions. I started to neglect Emily. I was always on a come down, depressed, dirty, shamed of myself. Then Kate found my stash of coke. You bring this filth here into my house after all we've done for you. It's nothing. Get out. What? You're on your own. No. And you will be on your own because you'll lose Emily. They'll put her in care. That really woke me up. I stopped that stuff overnight. But still, Annabelle didn't quite have the impetus needed to make her go to the police. After a few days away, my Aunt Kate agreed to take me back. Got you up, painfully thin. You've been for a checkup. I knew what was on her mind. All that time in the brothel. 1,800 men. Had I caught something sinister? A week later, Annabelle went for an HIV test. How many people would you say you've slept with? Multiple. A lot. More than 20? Yeah. And did you always use barrier contraception? No. Waiting for the result was the longest half hour of my life. Relax. It's negative. Thanks. Are you okay? You know, you have been very lucky. You are in the high risk category. That did it. It finally brought it home to me. What about all the others still left in Kidwelly? I'm fine, yeah, it was all clear. But I want you to do me a favour. I want you to take me to the police station. No, I want to go now. Annabelle's police interview, videoed for use in court, took three days. It was frightening. The interviews were going on and on, and it was getting bigger and bigger. I don't really understand what's done. Well, there's rape. Indecent assault, causing a child to have sex, causing prostitution for personal gain, multiple offences of each. Bob Arthur's news agency covered the case. Uh, the police investigation was difficult. Uh, they were trying to penetrate a very uh, tight, tightly knit group who didn't want to uh, get themselves into trouble, but also were willing to stand by each other and not get other members of the group in trouble. The material relating to Egyptology was found, Alistair Crowley's book was found, but they, they aren't illegal. But once other victims came forward, and that was the beginning of the end. Colin and Jackie, Annabelle's mum, were arrested. And despite everything, Annabelle was wracked with guilt. I was scared. What had I done? My mum was still my mum, and Colin had been the most important person in my life and my sister and half-brother had been taken into care.
and Swansea Crown Court. I mean, th these people were serious participants as well as what they might be able to describe as victims. At any point, they could have gone to the authorities, to the police, but they chose not to. And the jail sentences they eventually received reflect the, uh, their role.